Good morning, Amsterdam. Good morning, Future Tech. Thanks for having me. Thanks to the organizer. Thanks to Dennis for having me. I am John Paolo. I serve at IBV in Switzerland, even if I am Italian, and I am also a Microsoft Regional Director and MVP. First of all, I want to apologize for my Italian accent. <laughs> it's this, I will try to do my best, so apologize for that. So, let me ask you some questions before to begin. Just raise your hand. How many of you have a developer background? And how many of you are familiar with .NET? And yeah, nice. And how many of you have already developed uh, an artificial intelligence model? That's cool. I think you are in the right session if you want to get an overview about artificial intelligence. What we are going to get today is uh, to define what the context. What are artificial intelligence, what machine learning, and what deep learning are? We are going to walk through the core concept of uh, deep learning with the algorithm as well. We are going to see the way to implement artificial intelligence into your application. So to infuse artificial intelligence in your application to make them smarter. And we are going to look also at some, uh, at some code. Now, please take in mind that artificial intelligence is a big field. With, uh, with 45 minutes, my goal is to give you an overview and I give you uh, a lot of resources to put you in the right path. So if you want, you can start exploring this new field of doing the things, of developing. So before uh, to start, I want to make an important note on the computational power. As you saw in the keynote, the computational power for artificial intelligence is the key fact why nowadays we are able to use artificial intelligence. We got something like five million transistors on a chip on 1995. And this was the era of the Pentium One and of Windows 95. And Five million is the number of the population of New York City at that time. In 2010, in 2005, sorry, we got 160 million uh, transistors on a single chip. This is the entire population of the West Coast. It was the era where the web was growing and the mobile was near the corner. In 2010, we got one billion transistors on a single chip. And this is the post-iPad, post-iPhone era, and we were doing gesture and speech recognition in our living room with an 150 bucks device. Some year later, 2015, we got 7.5 billion transistors on a single chip. This is the entire population of the world, okay? Only two years after, we doubled it. It went to another scale. And that's why today we are able, today you are hearing everywhere artificial intelligence and so on. Because nowadays we have the computational power to run it. So let's define the context. Artificial intelligence is a field of science that is well known since a lot of years ago, actually since 1943. Okay, so it's nothing really new, as well as machine learning. But you have to understand that since the 80s or 90s, no scientist wants to work in the field because it was just a theoretical field. It, there were not the computational power needed to run it in reality. To me, an important date is 2012. Why? Because 2012, it was the first time a group of scientists was able, actually, to bring the theory to the practice, making a network of 160,000 computer processors. They were able to, for the first time in the world, they were able to make a system able to recognize images. So 
imagine how is hard if you have to write a code, write a straightforward code to recognize what there is in a picture, right? It's nearly not possible. For doing that, you need artificial intelligence, you need a lot of computational power, and that's what's marked there. So artificial intelligence, Artificial intelligence is the science of making things smarter. Human intelligence exhibited by machine, basically. Machine learning. So keep in mind that artificial intelligence, we are not at the um, Skynet era, right? If you think to Terminator, to the Terminator movie. Artificial intelligence at the moment is a narrow form of intelligence because it's good, like a human, of doing one or few things, okay? For example, it's good at recognize an object or to detect a credit, crowd, a credit card fraud, but it's not good uh, to making a toad, for example. Machine learning is a subset of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, basically, with machine learning, the process is to uh, get uh, some data and extract a pattern out of the data so that instead of uh, using the traditional programming for doing a thing, you can extract from a data a pattern and then apply to the data to find your... Uh, to find your uh, what you are looking for. Imagine, for example, if, uh, the, the example here is a spam filter. Imagine with traditional programming what you have to do to uh, write code for a spam filter. A huge list of if, then, else. With machine learning, what we can do is to train the system with a set of data. And then when the, when the system is trained, then it will be able to classify new emails coming based on the data he was trained on. So keep in mind that this is important because art machine learning, artificial intelligence, does not know anything about something that he was not trained on. And I will show you an example later. So deep learning is a technique to implement machine learning, basically. And uh, deep learning is the context, and uh, deep neural network is the real implementation, where we are going to write our code, basically. Where artificial intelligence is good at? Artificial intelligence, basically, is good at anything you can imagine with standard programming. It's difficult or not possible to achieve. Object recognition, speech recognition, natural languages processing. Um, there are a lot of other fields where you can uh, think artificial intelligence is good. In your software, if you can think something that you cannot solve with the standard programming approach, maybe is the case that this problem can be solved with the implementation of artificial intelligence. So. Let's talk a bit about, this, uh, this is a bit boring. I will promise you, I will make you uh, very fast. In the resources I will give you, there is a three hours course about deep learning. I will, uh, please email me if you will not get asleep at the, on this course if you are watching it. So, the most boring thing in artificial intelligence is preparing data, okay? Because this is, when you will be uh, good at, uh, in developing artificial intelligence, you will notice that this is the most annoying part, but the most important as well. Because you need to prepare the data, you need to prepare a set of data to train the system, and then you need to test it. Once you have done this, you can build, you can develop your artificial intelligence with some tools. Today we are going to use Visual Studio 2017 with artificial intelligence tools. We are going to use also ML.net, WinML, WinML, but I will show you also CNTK and TensorFlow. Once the model is trained, we can deploy it on our server, on our mobile device, on our laptop, and we can use it, basically. So, a bit about uh, terminology. So, uh, 
in, uh, when, when we talk about artificial intelligence data, uh, we have a data point that is basically, you can imagine on a database, a row, and then we have attribute, attributes or uh, features that is basically the same, that they are not uh, only something like properties in your object. So the things that you need to, to identify your, uh, what you are trying to classify. So for example, if you are going to classify a fruit, your attributes may be color and weight. So this is, this is what I was telling you it's important. We need to care about the data, to have enough data to train the model. Otherwise, our artificial intelligence will fail. I was in San Francisco some months ago at the Artificial Intelligence Summit, and there was a guy for Warner Bros who was telling us that uh, at Warner Bros, they was trying to create a boot uh, based on Sheldon Cooper, right? But out of, all the, uh, out of all the episodes, they weren't able to have enough data to have a good model, so the project failed. So that's to, show, to say you how much is important having the right data. If you are going to... Uh, uh, start with artificial intelligence, you cannot care about this part at this time because there are a lot of data sets already ready for you so that you can uh, uh, start using, okay, and caring just about the building your artificial intelligence and then test it. So this is, this is important. Uh, as I told you, machine learning, artificial intelligence, they know only about the data they are aware of. So if we care, if we are going to train our system with, let's say, something like uh, uh, a dog, so we are training some animals, dog with four legs, color black, 10 kilos, and chicken, uh, two kilos, color orange, and uh, five kilos. And then we ask the machine learning to, to demo them, to evaluate a call, which is, which are uh, four legs, it's black, and it weighs uh, 200 kilos, probably it will say it's a dog, okay? That's why, that's why, because he's not aware of. There was a friend of mine telling me that his uh, daughter, his little daughter, he never saw a horse. So the first time he saw a horse, he told his daddy, 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 this dog is really big right? Because she never saw a dog. The same happens in artificial intelligence, basically. So there are several ways to, uh, to train a model. We have supervised, supervised learning when we have labeled data. So when we say the system how to organize, how to make the boundary, right? Uh, so there are the labels, so it's already known. The system already knows, knows for us which are the domains. Unsupervised learning uh, on the opposite side where we don't have labels and the system has to figure out himself which are the boundaries okay, of the various things he's going to uh, try to categorize. And then there is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning, basically in reinforcement learning, you don't need to train your model. And this is, I like a lot, this model, because you don't need to, to, you don't need to train your model. Your model will be trained by himself. And there are example of uh, reinforcement learning, very nice in this example, the artificial intelligence was playing the game. And after a number of rounds, it was able to uh, do action and do moves that humans never did. So, how machine learning works? As I already told you, it's about domains, right? It's about categorization. So, we have to teach the machine learning, we have to give the training data, and then we have to tell him how to divide the data. It can be done by a linear pattern, that's the most simple. <laughs> It can be done with a cubic curve. This is just a function. For you as developer, it's just, it could be a property, setting a property in a, in a class, in your training class, okay? 
But then in the reality, this is what's gonna, gonna happen at the math level. And this is just 2D, but please imagine that as much feature you have, as much uh, dimension you will have. So the dimension can be more than three, and it will be hard to also to physically represent it. I will show you later uh, some uh, stuff how to represent the result of a training model as well. A neural network. Neural network, basically, they try to mimic the uh, brain where we have neuron, and each neuron is uh, proposed with some data, and then it decides if to fire, to light up or not, depending on what the neuron is uh, good at. Let's say we have some neurons uh, that they are good to identify cats or dogs, so when we see a cat, the neuron uh, lights up or not. And with artificial intelligence, with the neural network, this is what we are trying to do with, we are, we are trying to mimic this in a, in a machine. How to do this? This is a, our, an artificial neuron, a perspectron works. So we got, a, we got an input, based on the input, we have a weight of this input. We apply some, uh, some mat, okay? And then we have the activator part. The activator part is the part where it decides if the input has to fire up, say yes or no, good or not. There are several activator inputs. This is the mat behind it, but being a programmer, we don't care about mat, right? So these are the activation, activation function. The most important is the ReLU, and man, there are also a lot of others. So now, this is important. Even if we don't care about the, the math about it, right? But for us, it's just apply ReLU to this class. You have to understand that artificial intelligence is not an exact science. What this means? This means that you get the best result by trying several things. So, and I will show you uh, in the example we are going to do. Depending on the activator function we, function we are going to use, we get better or worse result, okay? So, stacking up a number of uh, uh, artificial neuron, we get, uh, we get a layer of neuron. Stacking up several layers, stacking up several layers, we get what is it called a deep neural network. The most important deep neural network that you are going to use, there are several, and it's also not good to enumerate it because there are several factors that they can change. Of course, if you apply maybe a, an activation function on, a, on another, but the most one that you are using are convolutional network and recurrent neural network. The output type that we expect from uh, artificial intelligence they are regression, so prediction of numerical values, classification, so it's a cat, it's a dog, clustering, the most similar, so for example, the Amazon when they recommend some product, and sequence prediction, so which is the next number? Which are the tools that we are going to use in uh, artificial intelligence in this example. As I told you, we are going to use uh, Visual Studio uh, tools for artificial intelligence that I think is embedded in 19. Windows ML and a bunch more. So how we can make our application intelligence? The first, the first method is simple. Artificial intelligence as a service. So, plain is easy. Cognitive services, there are a bunch of cognitive stand, uh, services, standard cognitive services that we can use in our application, right? And this is a sentiment analysis services, so it's very, very simple to, to use it. Just create a client, invoke it, and based on the data we gave him, you will get a result. Still easy, but a bit more work using machine learning studio or 
custom services. So where we can use our data on the services, right? We don't have to write any line of code. We don't have to do anything to use it, but they are predefined. They are just this. So for example, using custom cognitive services, you go on the site, you set up a new project, you put inside your uh, images, your training data, you train the model. Out of the model, you get a precision. If you like it, you can uh, download the, the package, the ONNX package, and then you can use in your application. But at this time, you are not using a service. Your application can work even disconnected from internet in that way, okay? Your model is running locally, so is using the local power of the local machine. Okay, and these are a couple of rows just to how to get uh, a frame out of uh, uh, an image and uh, then use it and get the guest. So in the client, what we are going to use in this slide is basically Windows ML. Windows ML is the client part of ML, uh, ML.net, so basically it it hides for you all the complication of saying, shall I use the GPU, shall I use the GPU on this machine to run the artificial intelligence? Enables, basically enables you to run models very, in a very simple way, okay? And, I, and we will show this in action. How this is possible? This is possible by the Open Neural Network Exchange format. So, uh, nowadays, with ONX, what you can do is to take the uh, major artificial intelligence framework, TensorFlow, Coffee, CNTK, you train your model, you get the model, and you uh, export it in an ONNX. After that, you can run it locally on your machine. That's the power. You are not using any services. You are using your servers, you are using your machine for... Uh, for doing it, and we will see an example about this. So this is what I already told you about uh, on an X. So the last way, the dirty way. For the example, we are going to use uh, the MNIST database of the handwritten digits. So the problem here is that we have 10,000 uh, data points to use, and they are uh, 28 by 28 pixel images, right, of handwritten numbers. And then we have 60 data points to test it, okay, if they are good or not. And that's what basically every artificial intelligence is doing. What we are doing at this moment is we have a bitmap, we have a picture 28 by 28 pixel. We are flattering it, so we are getting a byte array out of it, and we are flattering it so to get a big byte array. And this is important because as much bigger is your power in your machine, in your machine where you are training the model, the big RAM you have, the most bigger this thing can be. Okay, so this is this is why it's important to have maybe some uh, when you are training some real data, um, Nvidia Tesla or something like that. So this is all the math that is needed for doing the stuff, so let's develop our first application and then uh, let's look at the resources that I have for you. <laughs> it's a long list, I will explain you. So, okay, this is uh, ML.net. As I told you, pardon me, as I told you, we will start with ML.net, okay? ML.net is simple, it's just, a, it's just a package, so you go to the NuGet package and you add the uh, packages and you are ready to go. Once you have this, you need to have some uh, data, and 
This was the most harder part, actually, in ML.NET, to load the data. It took for me a little while to understand, even because you have to understand that ML.NET is something relatively new, okay? Other frameworks are more older, so maybe are better. What I can tell you from the experience we got in production, we are using 95% TensorFlow. By the way, this is something that is good to know because uh, it's something that is rising and it's familiar with your developing, developing languages. TensorFlow, if you want to write TensorFlow, I will show you something you have to write in Python, basically. So, in this example, what we are going to do is just loading the data. Okay? So nothing really special. And this is the only important role. Basically, what they are doing in my, at Microsoft is to make the thing simpler. You, you remember I told you about a uh, deep neural network, about the uh, artificial neuron and a layer of neuron and deep neural network that is a, a, a multi-layer of la neuron. This is multi-class classification. This is a multi-layer network, deep neural network. So you don't have to do anything else that choose between the option depending on the context what you want to do. Uh, there, are, uh, there are several, and this is still beta, so they are still changing the things, okay? There are several classifiers, but they are also changing the name. So to get updated, uh, I'm still I'm looking mostly every week at the GitHub repo because they are changing, right? And then say, okay, I want this kind of classifier, and train my model with the data I already loaded, okay? And that's it. When I when I when I'm done with this, I can uh, run it, and out of that I will get uh, I will get uh, Onyx file, okay? With the Onyx file, what I can do? This is a UVP app, but it can be also a server app or a WPF app, whatever. What I can do then? Just use my model. And uh, this is just something with uh, a small grid with a button and a text area where I can draw my handwritten digit, right? And uh, this is the code just to call it. So I have to load the model, right? And then get some uh, code to extract out of the in canvas the, the frame, make it 20 by 28 by 28, and give it to the, to the classifier, right? So this is uh, converting. Uh, okay, here, evaluate async. Okay, and this, this will give me the, the output. So let, let's try the first time without Okay, so let's me recognize it. He recognized something uh, good, okay? Okay. So it seems it's working. So I want to show you something something else. This is oh sorry, this is too small. Okay, yes, this is TensorFlow. So this is Python. This is a bit out of your comfort zone, okay? But this is the most used uh, uh, SDK for the artificial intelligence. This is doing basically the same thing as doing the, the, the ML.NET, but you know, you have a bit more granularity here because here you can really define your layers. Don't you, want, don't you want to use just TensorFlow because it's too much uh, deep? Okay, there is Keras, that is a layer developed by a senior developer at uh, Google where they develop TensorFlow as well. And this is a simplification to use TensorFlow, 
okay? But let's train this. I want to show you. Okay, so I can just run this. And this is creating the, getting the data, creating the deep neural network, and then it's going to to train it. He's using my, I suppose that he's using my GPU. Let's see if I see it somewhere, or maybe. Okay. So now, now the machine, what is doing is training the model, okay, out of the code we've written. And it is not using my GPU. I have two GPU on this machine. At this time, because of the system, something happens, it's not using the GPU. Of course, when you have multiple GPU on your machine, you have to take care that the, the, the process is using the right GPU. Otherwise, here is very slow now, OK? By the way, out of this, what you are getting, also thanks to ONNX, you can export the model right away to ONNX and then use it again. An important thing is the visual representation of the training data. So, uh, okay, so this is, this is very important because when you train the data, not always you, have, uh, you are able to see your result, or even if you see it, if, you are the, if they are not clear, it's very hard to understand if you trained your model good or not. Now, this is the representation of TensorBoard out of, uh, out of uh, Visual Studio, and I really don't understand it, <laughs> right? Okay. But let me show you a good one. Okay. This is the representation or in 3D of your trained model. And what you see over there, they are the domain, right? These are the, the various domain. So this is a number, this is another number. And you see, this is something strange over there. What is this? Why there is a red dot inside that stuff? So these are all six. And this is at zero. But this is what the percentage of error, right? This is how, how you get the percentage of error. Because this is at zero, but it seems that this, it, is, uh, it is at six. But if you go to see it, let's say it's hard to understand. OK, we are human, OK, and we clearly understand. But there are, I saw some cases where it's not really simple to understand that it's not really that number. So. Uh, this just to tell you, there are a number of ways to do the same things, okay? As .NET developer, we like Visual Studio, we like Visual Studio Code, but there are also other tools. Okay, maybe better, maybe worse, maybe there are some other racing, okay? So, and uh, we can do the same, sorry, we can do the same with CNTK, but it's basically the same thing, right? Adding the layers, okay, to your to your uh, network, and then deep neural network, and then run it, train it, and then you have to figure out if what you trained is good or not. If we go to the MNIST uh, site, as you, as I told you that artificial intelligence is not an exact science. You see, there are, they tried to train the MNIST model with various approach, and there are the resulting uh, error rates. That's why I told you that artificial intelligence is not an exact science, okay? So, so far so good. Uh, let's talk a bit about the, the resources. Because this is this is also 
an important part. Okay. Books. Make your own neural network. This is a very simple book, but if you want to start, this is a good starting point. Please take a picture, but I will also share, oh, if, you, if you look at my uh, Twitter, I will share the link where I will put both the samples and, uh, and the slides so you can get the resources, because I think it's also an important part of, the, of this speech. So this is a simple way. This is deep learning with Python, written by Mr. Hollett. And this is one of the senior developer at Google for artificial intelligence. So, and he is actually the initial author of uh, of uh, Keras. Okay, so it's also a good book. It's a bit more deeper in context. Then there is the book Learning from Data from uh, Doctor Yasser from the. California University. This is, if you want to go deeper in the math, this is where you have to go. If you buy the book, in the book there is the link to the whole semester at the California University to understand artificial intelligence like in the, at the university. Okay, that's what you need if you want to go the academic way. The, I was looking for uh, increasing my professional career, like you, like you uh, heard in the, in the keynote, right? I don't want to make a two days courses and then say I am an expert in uh, artificial intelligence. I was looking in something more academic. And there is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the MIT, that is making a professional certificate pro uh, uh, program in machine learning. You have to apply, you have to uh, uh, give the, your study plan, and if you are accepted, you can study from home and then go there giving the examination to get this certification. Okay? And these are a bunch of links that for sure you will need if you want to start developing artificial intelligence. That's it. This is the person that inspired me to uh, look forward to artificial intelligence and to make this speech. Any questions you have? No one? Can you go back one slide? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, of course, sir. Okay, I think there are no questions at the moment. I will share, if you want to get a picture also of this, this is also important. And I will ask one more time. Any more question? Any question? Oh, sorry. Where do you see AI heading in the future? Where I see AI heading in the future? I think that we as developers, we have to keep a close eye to artificial intelligence because, to be honest, uh, 10 years ago, I was thinking to my son to introduce him to programming. Nowadays, I'm thinking to introduce him to artificial intelligence programming. I think for us, it's the future where to look at and where to go, both for a career, both for a professional career, but also for revenues, that they are important because we are not rich, we live with what we, with, with what we earn. Any more? Sorry, can you repeat it? Yes, your data model. You didn't speak anything about the bias that might be inside? Uh, yes. Oh, that was my question. Okay. <laughs> so the, the, the bias is the, is the part where you can uh, uh, basically add or uh, subtract a uh, certain amount to make, the, to make the function work, basically. Okay, but this is something that you will uh, you will understand it in the in ml.net. You won't see it at all. You won't see it even in Keras. You will see it uh, if you are using raw TensorFlow. That's it. So again, it's something that 
It's for uh, really when you are fine-tuning stuff. Any more question? Can, can, uh, you mean if there is a uh, proper hardware to run against it? Yeah. Yes. You can. Uh, the the most important part is the training part, and the training part you have to do it on proper hardware. Proper hardware are the nowadays graphic card, okay? Nvidia graphic card. They are expensive. There are a lot of expensive. As I told you, the much RAM they have, the bigger your deep neural network you can train. So there are system, the basic system for training. Uh, uh, you can do it. I can do it also with my laptop. I am limited to six gigabytes of RAM, of course, and the timings of a laptop, of course. When you are doing this in production, you are gonna use some hardware, so some Tesla related. Uh, graphic card, or you can use it on uh, cloud, because on the cloud there are these virtual machines that you can rent, you can use for the time you need it, so that they are equipped with the right uh, graphic card. Keep in mind that they are as expensive as the, uh, in proportion as the real graphic card. We are talking about a base system from uh, NVIDIA will cost 60,000, and this is really the entry, entry level. Usually, uh, at IBV, we are doing it with the Azure uh, machines, but they are also expensive, because uh, Tesla uh, 100, it costs like, besides the calculator, it costs like, I think we paid 1,000 for uh, 12 hours training, something like this. But, one, uh, but uh, a server equipped with a Tesla P100 will cost I don't know, but a hundred thousand dollars. Please. Do you have the certificate? I'm going to be in uh, uh, Boston this summer. I'm studying, and actually, I'm studying with this book from the Doctor Yasser. Please. To, to train something? Ancient language. Ancient language. Not that I know, but this is, a, you know what, what I see on the problem you are exposing, the data. If you have enough data, even Cortana, when it was out, it was not out with all the languages. Because the problem with artificial intelligence, there is only one problem today, besides the economical one. It's the data. So if you have any, uh, anything trained, you can do also with ancient language. What I see better is something like in written ancient language, like the Egyptian, for example. It can be a good use, case, good use case where I see a lot of data that can be used for training the model, right? Something else? More question? Okay, I think is enough. I will be around if you have questions, and that's it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>